Wow, guys, you see that chocolate mess behind me? Man, this is bad today. I was going to throw a line. I brought one pole out here, but I'm not even going to waste my time even trying in this, uh, these conditions here. But anyway, guys, today I want to bring you a video. I got a lot of uh, comments and requests on Facebook and so on about doing a short review on the uh, Fishing Surfer uh, long distance RC boat. It's used to drop your bait out. It works very, very well when conditions are not like this. So we're gonna go over if I'm happy with it, should I have bought it, or uh, did I make a mistake buying it, or whatever. I mean, this surf is coming in pretty good here. But you can see, man, it's, it's a chocolate mess. The wind's blowing about 30 miles per hour, steady. Birds are loving it, man. They, they love it because there's not that many people on the beach. There are some out here, but uh, there's got to be 8 to 12 sets out there. Water clarity is about a 3. Let's get on with the video. Uh, I, I, I don't know, probably <clears throat> 3 or 4 months I bought a, um, a fishing surfer to drop the baits, because, especially in the wintertime because I didn't want to get out in that cold water and I wanted to get out to the second gut. So this thing works pretty well. It's got uh, the battery that right here, big old battery pack. It lasts pretty good too. I've, I've been able to, you know, send it out there, I don't know, 10 times and still have plenty of battery left. I mounted a GoPro up here so I can get the footage of it going out, you know, from the back or the front. It's pretty simple to operate. You've got your uh, little keypad right here. You can mark your fishing spots when you find fish or whatever. It's got GPS. It'll actually return to home. You know, it's pretty simple. The only thing that I don't like is like this door right here. If you put a weight in there in your bait, a lot of times it'll push this door open. You want to put your line down here and there's another area up underneath of it where you click the line right here. So you'll have your line here and here, and that seems to work best. If you have it inside this compartment here, a lot of times it'll come loose and pop out. So the way you do it, guys, is you take this A, B, or C, and you just move it to the spot when you want to drop your line. So the, the control panel is pretty simple to use. You got your little wheel to you know, control it left or right, trigger for go. So it's pretty simple to use. Now these run about, with tax and everything, about 800 bucks, something like that. If you're gonna spend the money, make sure you're gonna use it. We all know that the majority of the time in Texas, the surf is usually above three feet. The, uh, the height of the waves is above three feet. Would I recommend spending almost 800 bucks on this thing for a regular surf fisherman? Probably not, guys. The reason why is because of this right here. Most of the time, majority of the time down here, this surf is gonna be three foot or more. In order to use this boat, you're gonna need, you're gonna need the waves to be under two feet, uh, two feet or less. I've tried it in three feet and it just doesn't work very good. Uh, this thing will go sideways and when it goes sideways, <clears throat> your line's gonna get tangled. For me, guys, I made a mistake uh, buying this thing. I've only used it a couple of times, and yeah, it caught me one pompano. Yep, it's a fish, and it looks like a good size pompano. Getting down here about the 25, I think it's 24, 25 mile marker. Oh, it's a pompano. Look at that. Look at that, guys. 
It's a pompano. We're gonna have pompano for dinner tonight. Look at that, the boat paid off. Look at that, beautiful pompano. Let's see if we can catch another one. Look at that, man. Mwah. Yeah. And I think some whiting and stuff like that, but it takes too long to get this all hooked up and to get it out there. What I would suggest, and you know, it has a red light, a blue light, if you're gonna run it at night. But what I would suggest is uh, going somewhere like Breakaway Tackle and getting you a 14 foot rod or going to Academy and getting your 14 foot rod because you can, you can hit where the fish are the second gut out there standing on the beach with a good setup, a 14 foot rod. You can see uh, Nick from Breakaway Tackle doing it all the time. In the summertime, you can use eight foot rods, uh, even seven foot rods, and you can wade out to about waist deep and you could hit the second gut. And that's where most of your fish are gonna be, the first or second gut. So this thing, to me was just a waste of money. If you're fishing in the bays or the channel and you wanna get it out there, it's perfect. To each its own or whatever, I mean, whatever you use it for. But for me, mainly I surf fish, so this thing, I'm still gonna use it, but just not as much as I would, I, I thought I would use it. This thing is perfect for shark fishermen, but again, those waves gotta be under three feet. If they're like this today, where they're four to seven feet, uh, this thing will just roll over like this and your line's going to get tangled if you're using bright. Oh crap, <laughs> oh, oh man. You definitely don't want to hit a wave sideways. Boom. But the only reason you really need to go past the second gut is to is if you're gonna be shark fishing, trying to catch big sharks and stuff like that. Most of your redfish, your trout, uh, your pompano, uh, whiting, <clears throat> just about every kind of fish is either gonna be in the first or second gut. In the spring and summertime, when the water is warmer, you can reach all that just by wading out no matter what size your rod is. Save yourself 800 bucks and Go to Breakaway Tackle and get you a nice 14-foot rod. The only reason why I don't use the 14-foot rods is because when I'm surf fishing, guys, I prefer using spoons, uh, topwaters, uh, DOA shrimp, down south lures, stuff like that. But the water's got to be two foot or less for that, and the clarity's got to be a five or above. Oh, got one, guys. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, Lord. A good one, guys. Oh, man, I got the wrong pole for this. I'm telling you. This has got to be a red because it ain't jumping out of the water. It's got, he's coming in towards me. Yep, there he is. It's got to be another red. Oh, he's a fighter, man. Unless it's a big old ladyfish just not coming out of the water. It's going in towards the beach. Sometimes ladyfish do that. As long as it don't come out of the water, we'll see what it is when we get it up to shore. It's going into the beach. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> whoa. Calm down. It's right in front of me. Oh, it's a big old trout. I know that's a trout right there. Good size freaking trout. Beautiful fish, man. Look at that. I have not caught one of these in a long, long time. That's what I prefer to do. I do not like sitting here with fish bites and shrimp and stuff like that. 
I prefer the action you get from a fish hitting whatever lure you're you're using. This boat, it like I said, it works really, really good and uh, good surf conditions, but for the money, I wish I wouldn't have bought it because it just, uh, it's just not gonna hardly get used down here because of the surf conditions are usually three foot or more. That's my personal opinion. I'm sure some of you guys that have these may have a different opinion, but as far as for me, it's just, it wasn't worth the money. I will always have it in my Jeep anytime I go surf fishing, just in case. It does everything it's supposed to do. This is just my opinion whether you should buy one or not since I get that question asked all the time. So there'll be more content using this boat as soon as this surf calms down a little bit to where I can use this. I'll even use it in the summertime even though I, I wade in the water and cast out there. Come fishing on a day like today out here surf fishing, no, it doesn't make sense, guys. Unless you find cleaner water going down pins, about the only thing you will catch in this kind of water is hardheads. Some Jack, Jack Daniels. We soaked the shrimp in Jack Daniels last night. I think I might have something. Freaking hardheads. Every once in a while you'll get lucky and catch a red. You might be in the lucky spot and catch a red, but that's that's rare on days like this. Plus you gotta deal with the wind and if you're using braided line, then you're gonna get wind knots and stuff like that. So I get a lot of comments of, uh, you know, well, I still get out there. Well, it costs me money to come out here and fuel, if I buy bait and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna drive out here not to catch any fish. I've done that plenty of times and you guys know that. I'm not waiting for the perfect condition. I'm waiting for the surf, the water clarity mainly to get above five because that's when you're gonna catch some fish. When it's dirty and murky like this, it doesn't matter how uh, rough the surf is, most of the time you're just gonna catch hard heads. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out our Patreon page because there's a lot of extra content I put up there, and I just put something up right before coming out here, and I'm doing a lot of work on the Patreon, doing how-tos, how to catch uh, redfish, trout, whiting, pompano, jack crevel, and I'll be and sheep's head, and I'll be doing some other articles and stuff like that. It's fairly cheap to join Patreon, and you get some extra content along the way. Appreciate you guys watching this video. We'll see you next video. Peace. Have a great work week.